In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Xero account if you are a sole trader. Okay, let's head into Xero and take a look. I've signed up for my free trial in Xero and I'm automatically going to be taken through the steps of setting up. But I realise there'll be lots of people that already have their Xero account they started using it and then think, oh, maybe I haven't set it up properly. So this video, stay with me, is designed for you guys as well. I will show you where to get to all these sections, even if your Xero account is already set up. So this is the welcome screen and I'm going to be guided through the steps. So I'm going to choose next. And I'm asked about my organization details. So I've already got my name. I'm not going to have a registration number because I'm not a company and I need to change my organization type. So I'm going to the drop down and I'm going to choose sole trader. I'm going to fill in my address details, scrolling down and I choose next. Now it's asking me if I'm VAT registered. So you will know the answer to this. So it'll be an easy yes or no. I'm going to say yes. My VAT scheme is standard, which is the accrual scheme. If I was in cash or flat rate, I would choose them from the drop down. What's my VAT period? It's going to be quarterly. And what's my VAT number? On the screen, we're shown what our year end date is, 31st of March. If we need to change it, we choose change here. As a sole trader, I would recommend 31st of March as your year end because it's in line with the tax year. There's no need to put the 5th of April. 31st of March is close enough and HMRC will be happy with that. Okay, I don't need to spend much time on this screen, but it's simply asking me, what are the defaults for my sales? Do I want to show figures before VAT, which is tax exclusive, or after VAT, which would be tax inclusive? I'm happy to leave that as it is. I'm not in the construction industry, and I'm now going to go to next again. Okay, so we've done organization settings, financial settings. Now it's taken us to invoice settings. So am I going to issue sales invoices? I'll say yes. And I have a standard layout, which I can upload my logo to. So I will do that. I will browse, select my logo and upload. I'll go to options and I will choose edit. And I'm not going to do a lot here, but I'm just going to change this. I don't like tax invoice. Change it to say sales invoice. I've made all my changes. I'm not being too fussy here. I know I can come back to this at a later date and I do discuss invoice setup in other videos. Filled in my payment terms, so payment by bank transfer, bank details and save. Let's go to default settings. I can set up payment terms, when are my bills due, when are my sales invoices due, well, all my sales invoices are going to be due for payment 14 days after the invoice date. Am I happy with INV as my sales invoice prefix? Yeah, that's fine. Next number is one. Again, not too concerned about what we have here. I can come back to this and save. Head into next. Do I want to set up any users? I'm going to say no at this stage. Do I want foreign currency? Again, it's a no, so I can say next. Quite happy to use the default chart of accounts by zero. So again, it's next. But now I'm going to do a little bit of tidy up for a sole trader. So there's some accounts that I don't need. If we go to the equity section, we have an account for share capital, which doesn't apply to sole traders. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to say delete. We've got an account if I introduce funds into my business. I simply don't like the name of it, so I'm going to change that by clicking on it. And I'm going to say funds introduced by Rosie so it's clear and save. Again, owner A drawings. Select it. Drawings as if I take money out of the business for personal use. I'm going to say drawings and just put Rosie's name in again. So if I go back to all my accounts, is there anything else on here that's not relevant for a sole trader? So I would just scroll through the list. I can see director's remuneration. So I think, okay, sole trader, there are no directors. Select it, back up to the top and delete. Say okay. 
to confirm. And again, I'm going to scroll through the list. Here we go again, Director's Loan. Select it. This time I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to head back to the top at this stage. There's not going to be deferred tax, so I can remove that. And that makes me think, oh yes, what about corporation tax? Again, corporation tax is not relevant for a sole trader. So you can see I've selected a few this time back to the top and I can delete them all at once. I could also add a bank account at this stage because if I don't and I scroll down and choose next, I will get a message. I'll say, that's all right, I'll come back and add my bank. So I will say yes and continue. Now I'm being asked, when am I going to start using zero? Your conversion date in the ideal world, you be moving to zero at the end of your year. So you would say, we're starting using zero in April. So zero is going to look for conversion balances the day before the 31st of March. Again, next. So if you were already in business, you will have opening balances at this date that you would fill in. So accounts receivable would be what you're due from your customers, and that would be a debit amount. Accounts payable, what you're due to your suppliers, and that would be a credit amount. You would also add your bank account balance in here. We didn't set up a bank account, so we can't do it at this stage. Again, we would choose next, and that is our setup complete. So I'm going to add a bank account, and you would select the bank that you use. You would follow the steps because you'd be linking to your actual bank account. Once you've set up your bank account, it would also appear on your chart of accounts. You'll see it doesn't have a code. I'm going to select it and I'm going to give it code 600. That's the code that I normally use for a bank account. And the reason for that, if we go to our assets section, we can see that our other assets, which we hope our bank account is as well, unless we've got an overdraft, are 600 codes too. So what about if you've already set up your sole trader account, but you want to make changes? Well, if you want to make changes to your organization details, you go to your business name and you would choose settings. Then you would choose organization details. And here's the screen that you would change. For your financial settings, back on the dashboard, accounting, advanced financial settings. For your invoice settings from the dashboard, your business name, settings and invoice settings. You remember this is where we uploaded our logo and where we went to options and chose edit. So it's quite easy to go back in here at a later date. To invite users to your Xero account, your business name, settings, users. To add a new user, you simply go to invite a user. If your business uses foreign currency, you would go to your business name, settings and currencies. So for example, if you traded in US dollars, you go to add currency, select USD and add. To access your chart of accounts, accounting, advanced and chart of accounts. It's marked with a blue star and what that means is we've actually got a shortcut to it. So if we go to accounting, instead of going to advanced, we can scroll down and choose chart of accounts here. And you remember, this is where we made changes. This is where we can add an account, add a bank account, select accounts, and then you can archive or delete them. You can also change the name of accounts. So if you say sales and you want to say rugs and save. For your opening balances, we go to accounting, we go to advanced, and if we scroll down to the bottom, we have conversion balances. So that's your sole trader account set up in Xero, ready to start using it. OK, let's recap. And what I would suggest is a bare minimum you set up in Xero if you're a sole trader. So you would want to add your organization settings, really your business name, business type and address is absolutely fine. In financial settings, you want to add your year end date and your VAT information. In your invoice settings, you want to tidy it up a little bit. You can come back to it later. You'd want to add your logo and you would want to add your bank details for getting paid. Inviting users, yes, if you need to, but again, you can come back to that at a later date. Currencies, add them if you need to. 
the chart of accounts, you do want to do a little bit of tidying up. You want to remove the accounts that are not relevant for a sole trader. So get rid of anything that refers to directors, anything that refers to corporation tax, and anything that refers to share capital. It's just too confusing to leave these. Then where it refers to funds introduced or drawings, remove the word in owner A, leave it blank, or put your own name, the sole trader name, in there. The account balances, you do need to tell zero your start date. You need to add your conversion balances. Again, these can be added at later date. And that's really all that you need to do to get started using zero as a sole trader. Until next time, happy zeroing.